So let's look at the carbon cost of different materials. Conventional materials like concrete, steel, and foam versus carbon storing materials like straw, wood fiber, cellulose, wool, cork, bamboo, rice hulls, seaweed. There are so many. They all go through a similar process at some point. We harvest the raw material, then we take it to a factory for production. It gets transferred to the site, then we use the material to make the building. Ta-da! Let's say, for argument's sake, the building lasts for 60 years. And then at the end of its lifetime, the material is recycled or it goes to landfill. All these processes release a certain amount of carbon into our atmosphere, and carbon storage materials do the same thing. But to see the difference, we need to back things up a little. You see, for carbon storing materials, the process works a little differently. First, the product is planted, so there is some carbon released in that process. But then the plant starts to grow. And as it grows, through photosynthesis, it starts absorbing carbon from our atmosphere and storing it inside the plant. This process continues until the plant is ready to be harvested. Then we go through the same process as before, but the difference is we start the process at a negative carbon number because of the CO2 it absorbed while growing. So by the time that building is in use, that material is storing more carbon than it has released back into the atmosphere. For consistency, let's assume the building lasts 60 years. That whole time, the material is storing CO2 it removed from our atmosphere, which is why we call it a carbon storage material. Then at the end of its life, depending on the material, it can go a bunch of different ways. Sometimes we can reuse it in another building, and the carbon storage continues. We could recycle it, we could burn it to create biochar and store some of the carbon, or burn it at a cogeneration plant to create both heat and power. Maybe it's just buried inside the landfill, or worst case, breaks down and releases methane into our atmosphere. But as you can see, regardless of what happens, this is the difference between materials that have a carbon footprint and materials that offer carbon storage. This carbon drawdown helps to reverse climate change and provides the kind of carbon sink the IPCC says we will need to limit our warming and meet the targets set in the Paris Accord. According to the IPCC, limiting warming to 1.5 degrees will require removing carbon from the atmosphere in addition to reducing emissions. Using carbon storing materials in our builds is a great way to do that. If you'd like to learn more about making buildings into carbon sinks, check out Builders for Climate Action at buildersforclimateaction.org.